my name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today someone asked me a question, they said my uh, bike has an O2 sensor, but it has no catalytic converter, it has no cap, and he was saying, I always thought that O2 sensors were because of cats, or O2 sensors were there because of emissions, because of cats, and yada yada yada. It's not actually true, so, fucking move that, Jesus Christ. So, the whole point of a um, O2 sensor is because unlike carbs, so carburettors, they basically meet a fuel by mass airflow. It's pretty much that and the pressures, um, or change in pressures, the pressure differentials. So when there's a vacuum in the manifold, you will draw up the fuel-air mixture. The mass flow rate of that air is proportional to how much fuel um, is drawn into the cylinders ish <laughs> this is one of the problems with carbs there are other uh, other factors that do change this which carbs are susceptible to and there was a lot of work done over the years uh, additional circuits stuff like that to um, help alleviate some of these issues that carburetors had but obviously uh, fuel injection was now the thing now the thing is with fuel injection fuel injection has been around for fucking donkey's years it's nearly been as, it's been around as long as engines have Diesels use fuel injections, they were mechanical fuel injectors, and we will basically get into that when we start going through the diesel stuff. Um, but the problem with a fuel injector, in a sense, is that you control your fuel injector basically just by your pulse width. So it's basically how long you leave your injector on. If you want more fuel, you leave your injector on for longer. If you want less fuel, you wean it back. Now the problem is, is just like with the carbs in a sense, is that the environmental conditions that are happening um, from time to time always change. So air pressure, air density, uh, air temperature, which are kind of all related. Um, the load on the engine, your RPM, stuff like that. These are all variables. These are all things that change from moment to moment and they're a fucking pain in the ass. But um, a carb, uh, an injector system can use all these sensors, but one of the other things it can do is that it requires um, to know how well combustion is going on. So when your engine is cold, a lot of your fuel is uh, basically separating, it's wetting out on the ports and the cylinders, stuff like that. And when your engine gets up to operating temperature, then it's not. Now there was a big problem with fuel injectors originally was the fact is because they didn't know how well combustion was going, um, they were basically um, <laughs> starting a car. Go, go, power Rangers. Go, go, power Rangers. Go, go, power Rangers. You might power Rangers. So one of the problems they had originally in the day with back in the day with fuel injectors is that they were um, diluting oil at a, a ridiculous rate because they were having to richen the carburetor at uh, carburetor they were having to rich <laughs> you know richen the mixture um because a lot of it was coming out solution and the step change um between the engines going from a cold situation to a warm situation meant that they were always um just flooding the engine with too much and it's because of the hysteresis so in a sense what's happening is is the engine is warming up but your sensor isn't warming up yet so for example one of your temperature sensors is in your coolant and that temperature sensor is after the thermostat so the engine's getting quite hot and the thermostat doesn't know shit because uh, the sensor for your uh, cooling system doesn't know shit because your thermostat hasn't opened same kind of things with uh, air cooling and stuff like that. Um, it depends where you place your sensor. If you place your sensor, in a sense, too close to a heat source, what happens is, is that the engine, get the, them spots, the hot spots, gets really hot really quick, and then it leans it back down, and then your engine chokes out, stuff like that. Um, but if you put it, in a sense, too far away, so imagine if we had a cylinder here with a piston in it like this, and then you had a block of whatever with heads and all that kind of shite. If you put your sensor somewhere here, just say for example, you're not going to, but just say if you did. After a couple of combustions, this is going to go, oh, it's hot, fucking hell. It'll lean out the mixture and then you're going to run like shit and you're going to choke away. If you put a sensor just say out here, 
your engine's now really quite hot and it's going to take quite a long time for the heat to saturate. So that was the problem. And then the emissions thing came in as well, or started to become a thing in the 70s and stuff like that. And the problem was, was that cats were very expensive. They've got honeycomb coated in platinum as a catalyst. And they were basically um, destroying cats because of t uh, too much fuel saturation or basically it was too hot. And you also needed a certain amount of oxygen um, to aid in the reaction because basically what you're doing is, is you're um, reacting the oxygen with these emissions that you don't want. And that's in a sense how your cat helps. One of the other things is nitrous oxides as well or oxides of nitrogen. Um, they're nasty nasties and your cat tries to get rid of them. But anyway, we'll go into the emissions and what gases do what and how these uh, systems work. But basically, what would be wonderful is if you could basically peer into the combustion and basically see how it's going. So you think like a Bunsen burner, um, you have like the little twisty window at the bottom and when you just light it originally, it's a fucking yellow flame and then when you slowly open the window, you basically add oxygen, pre-mix oxygen to the gas that's coming through your gas pipes and through your Bunsen burner and then basically you get a... Um, a, a, a better combustion so it turns blue and you are making use there's not as much uh, free carbon and stuff like that which is the thing that makes it go yellow basically but anyway chemistry is not my thing we'll leave it at that um, but uh, in a sense you it'd be great if you could see as you're twisting it now imagine that you could go too far and add too much oxygen and that slide allowed you to add too much oxygen and then it starts to spit or do something weird what I'm saying is, is you can actually twist and see what's going on. You can see the flame. The problem is in an engine, we can't see that. You know, it's all meant to be sealed. And even if you were to put a little glass window in it or something like that, what the fucking hell are you going to look at? You know what I mean? Um, so basically what they need to do, or what they needed to do, was to be able to measure combustion as it's happening. You know, real time-ish. You know, it's not perfect real time, but it's close enough. It's, you know, it's a combustion stroke after. Um, and what you do is that you have your cylinder and then you have your exhaust port like this. And then what you do is you stick an O2 sensor in it like this with a couple of wires sticking out of it. That's your O2 sensor. And what this does is when combustion occurs inside your cylinder, when combustion occurs in your cylinder, um, you can either be oxygen rich or oxygen poor. And that's what the O2, is, O2 sensor is there for. It's literally there to measure O2, it's there to measure oxygen. If you have got too much oxygen, so if your oxygen is high, this means you are running lean. Because, just say if this is a 250cc cylinder, you have 250 cc's thereabouts of air and the, the remainder for weight is fuel, which is fuck all. So we might as well just say it's 250 and a little smidgen is fuel. If you have too much oxygen, after all this is combusted, imagine we combust all of this because this is all the fuel that we have. We've got this section here and it's not obviously just sectioned out, but it's a, vol it's, um, a, a volume amount, a proportional amount. So once we've got this, when this is ejected, we can say, God, oh, fucking hell, you know, 15%, 15% is O2, and that's way too much, which means we haven't added enough fuel, which means we are running lean, and that's just all bad. We don't want to be doing that. That's too lean. If you then do the opposite, and just say we do exactly the same thing as we've done here, but it's the other way around. We burn all this like this and this remaining is fuel. This means we'll be very oxygen poor and then when we pass it past the O2 sensor there will be hardly any oxygen there. Now combustion unfortunately isn't perfect, it's never complete. If it was that's how you get your really high efficiencies and everyone will be singing and dancing and that's what everyone's trying to get towards, especially the car manufacturers. But you imagine we burn all this and this is all exhaust gases and then this is just say, I don't know, 1% hydrocarbons 
Um, it doesn't measure hydrocarbons, it measures the oxygen. Well, all the oxygen has been consumed pretty much and then you know there's excess fuel that's pissing out of your uh, you can smell it's pissing out of your exhaust but when this passes the o2 sensor we have got fucking hardly any um, this is really low which equals a rich mixture so it's not a direct measurement it's an inferred measurement we are not measuring combustion we are not measuring if it's rich or lean fuel because we're not measuring fuel we are measuring the oxygen if you add too much oxygen and not on the fuel, you are going to get excess oxygen. If you add too much fuel, you're going to have fuck all oxygen. And if it reads nothing, it goes all haywire. And generally that means your O2 sensor is fucked. But um, the ECU has a standard mapping in a sense of this is what we'd set with the parameters which are normal. If your O2 sensor, you get a blinking light or whatever. But your O2 sensor is going, oh, fucking no, I can't make sense of anything. So your O2 sensor is there basically to measure the after products and it's there to measure O2. Um, and we, you've got your lambda which is your ratio between one and the other and basically you want about one about there. And we'll go into all that measurement and stuff and I'll actually even do a video about how that O2 sensor actually works, how it detects oxygen. But you can see from them two is that this has got nothing, it, it has, it's very important for emissions but this is a closed loop system. And we'll go into closed loop, open loop, wide band, and all that kind of rubbish in another video. But basically what you've got is you've got a feedback loop here. So what happens is, is if it's if it's high, if it's lean, this the signal goes to the ECU. So you've got your ECU up here. This O2 sensor comes in and it says, wow, fucking hell, high O2. And then it tells the injectors, add a bit more fuel. And then if it's the other way around, and we come down here and it's too low it says whoa 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 we've got too much oxygen uh, not enough oxygen lean it out a bit you know and this is how you get your stoichiometric ratio this is what we're trying to get close to it depends on the engine characteristics and all the rest of it um, you can just plug in 14.7 to 1 and then you look at your O2 sensor and you can measure your hydrocarbon emissions and stuff like that and your NOx's and Blah, blah 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 and you see it's not quite perfect because in here this is never perfect and stuff like uh, turbulence squish bands so on and so on are all trying to increase the efficiency of combustion hope that makes sense like i said there's a lot 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 more to this and i'm sure a lot of you guys are all interested in closed loop open loop but basically this is a closed loop system it's a feedback system I'm the injector, I put fuel in and then the O2 sensor goes, too much! And then the ECU goes to the injector, calm it down son. And then he goes, alright, so it leans off again. So the injector goes, you can have a bit now. And then the O2 sensor goes, that's fucking not enough. And then the ECU says, just up it a bit. And it's this constant backwards and forwards um, between your O2 sensor and your injectors and your ECU is the brain box in there telling everyone what to do and when to do it and so on and so on and so on. ECUs nowadays also control, um, you know, ignition advance and retarding and stuff like that. They control, you know, a lot of things and it uses all sorts of sensors to know where it is and stuff like that. But we'll go through all that. Hope that makes sense. Hope that makes sense. And I'll see you in a bit.